JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 3rd. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, today I will talk about the rebound in equity markets. I will talk about the expectations over uh, rate cut by the FOMC. I will also do, talk about the RBA, which already delivered a rate cut uh, overnight. While for today we have Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for February, the American Petroleum Institute weekly report on crude oil inventories. And uh, tonight, during the Asian Morning Wednesday, we have Australia's GDP for the fourth quarter. We also have three speakers on the agenda. And as always, let's start with the performance of the US dollar against the other uh, major currencies. The dollar traded lower against all but two of the other G10s on Monday and during the Asian Morning Tuesday. It lost the most ground against uh, Euro, NOC, and CHF in that order, while it gained only against the pound. The greenback was found virtually unchanged versus the Canadian dollar. Now, although the Swiss franc was among the gainers, the dollar was among the se was uh, the second loser in line, while the yen uh, took the last place among the currencies that gained against the US, uh, their US counterpart. What's more, the commodity-linked currencies also outperformed the greenback, so this makes it hard to arrive to safe conclusions with regards to the broader market sentiment, and thus we will turn our gaze to the equity world. Doing so, we see clearly that uh, market participants decided to add to their risk exposure. Most major EU and US uh, indices traded in green territory. The only exceptions were uh, the German DAX, which slid uh, 0.27, and Italy's food CMIB, which fell 1.50% uh, despite reports that the Italian government will introduce measures to soften the effects from the coronavirus. Just for the record, Italy is the European country hit the most by the coronavirus, with the death toll surging to 52 from 34 within a day. And that's why maybe uh, the food CMIB has uh, continued its slide. Now, the positive investor morale rolled over somewhat during the Asian morning today. Although Japan's uh, Nikkei slid 1.22%, China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng, and South Korea's uh, KOSPI gained 0.74%. 0.25 and 0.58 percent respectively. Now, following their worst week since the 2008 financial crisis, which wiped out around $5 trillion from the market, most indices may have rebounded on expectations that uh, central banks will respond to safeguard their economies from the, di from the damaging impact of the coronavirus. The first signal came from Fed Chair Jerome Powell on Friday, who released a statement saying that although the fundamentals of, uh, of the US economy remain strong, the coronavirus poses evolving risks and uh, that the committee will use its tools to act as appropriate to support the economy. Early yesterday, it was the turn of uh, Bank, of, uh, Bank of Japan Governor uh, Kuroda, who said that his bank will take the necessary steps to stabilize markets jolted by the coronavirus. The ECB followed suit later in the day, also signaling readiness to act. On top of that, reports suggested that finance uh, ministers from the G7 group will hold a conference call today in order to discuss how to fight the effects of uh, the outbreak. 
Now, elevated expectations over further easing by the Fed may have also been the catalyst behind the dollar's slide. According to the Fed Fund Futures, market participants are pricing in a rate cut to be delivered at the Fed's upcoming gathering. And the more, e the more interesting point is that the size of uh, the is the size of the expected cut. Investors are really are really confident that the Fed will cut by 50 basis points, considering such an action to be a done deal. You can see here the yields of the Fed fund futures. The current rate of the FOMC is here. After 25 basis points, it would be here. And you can see that the March yield is pricing in, is below uh, the rate of one uh, 25 basis point cut. It means that market participants are pricing in more than one cut. And interestingly, the April rate is uh, below a second cut as well. So if you are expecting the rates to be at this point um, during April, it means that you expect the FOMC to cut to deliver a double cut in March because the next uh, FOMC meeting will be in the end of April. So again, I repeat, if you are expecting the, the rates during April to be at this point, it means that we are expecting uh, 50 basis points cut to be delivered at the March meeting. Now, apart from Powell's remarks, what may have uh, bolstered further expectations over a bold action by the Fed and thereby added more pressure to the greenback could have been the negative surprise in the ISM manufacturing PMI for February. Expectations were for a slide to 50.5 from 50.9, but the index fell to 50.1, just a tick above the boom or bust uh, zone of 50. Now, passing the ball to the Euro, the common currency continued marching higher despite expectations that the ECB will cut its main refinancing rate by 10 basis points at uh, next uh, week's uh, gathering. In our view, investors may have maintained long, long positions on the euro as the ECB is expected to cut by the smallest amount, by, by the smallest uh, percentage, let's say, and perhaps due to recent reports that uh, Germany's uh, finance ministry is seriously considering to boost fiscal spending due to growing pressure to support the nation's sluggish economy, something that will lessen the need for, for aggressive easing uh, by, the, by the ECB. Uh, the stimulus uh, trunk was opened by the RBA during the Asian morning today. Australian officials decided to cut interest rates by 25 basis points to a new record low of 0.5%, with Governor Philip Lowe saying that in the post-meeting statement that the coronavirus was having a significant impact on the domestic economy and that it's hard to assess how large the effects will be. In the statement, it was also repeated that officials remain prepared to ease monetary policy further to support the Australian economy. Now, according to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve, there is an 86% probability for officials to push the cut button again in May. So we had a rate cut today, but market participants remain convinced that more are uh, on the way, more cuts are on the way. The Australian dollar traded somewhat lower at the time of the release, but uh, bearing in mind that this was uh, largely priced in following the initial signals of a coordinated policy action by major central banks, the slide was short-lived. The Aussie was found higher against the US dollar, perhaps aided by the broader upbeat sentiment. Parad uh, paradoxically, despite the RBA cutting rates and expected to cut more, the Aussie may now enjoy some gains for a while on expectations that other banks will, will follow suit in order to prevent a global recession. Now, having said all that, though, it may be naive to assume that rate cuts uh, will be enough to revive the global economy from the impact of the coronavirus. Although infected cases and deaths entered a slowdown mode on Monday, Sunday was marked by acceleration, which suggests that the worst is not behind us yet. With the virus now spreading much faster outside China than, than within, and with no vaccine on the horizon, predicting Predicting when it uh, will be contained and how large the effects will be appears to be a hard task. 
If this coordinated easing effort fails to stimulate uh, decently the global economy, panic may return into the financial world, leading uh, to another slide in equities and other li risk-linked assets, as investors could start seeking shelter in safe havens again. Now, with regards to today's events, following the RBA decision during the European morning, we got uh, Switzerland's uh, GDP for the fourth quarter, which slowed by less than anticipated in, quarter, in quarterly terms, something that pushed the year-over-year -year rate up to 1.5% from 1.1%. Later in the day, we get Eurozone's preliminary inflation data for February. Expectations are for the headline rate to have declined 1.2% year-over-year from 1.4%, while the core rate is anticipated to have held steady at 1.1% year-over-year. That said, with the German headline inflation rate staying unchanged at 1.7%, we see the risks surrounding Eurozone's headline print as tilted to the upside. Although both rates will still be below the ECB's objective of below but close to 2%, a move in the desired direction combined with recent reports uh, that Germany's finance ministry is seriously considering to boost, fis to boost uh, fiscal spending may lessen further the need for, for aggressive stimulus by the ECB and thereby support uh, the euro somewhat further. With regards to the energy market, we get the American Petroleum Institute uh, weekly report on crude oil inventories, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. Now, as for tonight, during the Asian Morning Wednesday, Australia releases its uh, GDP data for the fourth quarter, with the quarter-over-quarter quarter rate expected to have held steady at 0.4%, something that could drive the year-over-year -year rate up to 2% from 1.7% in the third quarter. This would be a somewhat pleasant development for RBA policymakers, but we doubt that it could materially affect expectations with regards to additional cuts. Investors may prefer to read into data concerning the first quarter of this year as they try to assess whether and by how much did the coronavirus has affected the Australian economy, which is closely linked to the Chinese one. Uh, now, as for the speakers, we have three on the agenda. Today, we will get to hear from ECB Vice President Luis De Guintos and Cleveland, and Cleveland uh, Fed President Loretta Mester, while tonight, Chicago Fed President Charles Evans uh, will uh, step up to the rostrum. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. For those who are interested in learning more about the main events of uh, the week uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market um, Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye from me and again, have a great day. JFT, just fair and direct.